people of the Michelin MX Nationals powered by Milwaukee. Here we are, the first ever uh, MXN TV, MX Nationals. We're going to call this show Rewind, the Rewind show, because we're going to go back after each round, get some guests on and talk about what went down. Uh, I can't do it single handedly as much as my ego would probably think it could. Um, it's, it's not as big as it used to be. Um, but somebody's going to fill in that little bit of ego that I've lost down the years since I stopped racing. Somebody who's got in abundance, uh, my cohort, my co-commentator, the man that's been riding this week with no top on, the Jack Black of British Motocross. Let's bring him in. It's Callum Swan. <laughs> there he is. <laughs> I've got some light in this week, Jeff. I've got light in. You've got the light. Yeah. You've got a you got a bike in the background. You got your yeah. top on. You, you just walked bike, out. Bro. You can win this bike. It's live on the website right now. We'll talk about that afterwards um, or towards the end. And you just wolfed down a Chinese, didn't you? Yeah, I did. Ever the athlete. Look, you know, so I've got to fuel that body somehow, Jeff, haven't I? You have indeed. Tell me, are you still aching from our two laps at the weekend? <laughs> Mate, that was so bad. Wasn't it? I can't, I actually can't believe how tiring that was. <laughs> uh, so, I can. I've oh. just been out riding today. But listen, I'm going to talk about that in a minute because I've been riding with our first guest on the Rewind uh, MX National show. Let's bring him in, bring him in, Mr. Tom Grimshaw. There he is. How are we doing? You all right? All good. The halo. He's got a halo above his head. Yeah. That good. There we go. Tom. <laughs> Before we get yeah. talking about the first MX Nationals, uh, powered by Milwaukee, just tell everybody, uh, but particularly Callum, just how good I was today at VIP. Honestly, the first words my dad said when I came in, it was anything about my rider or anyone else, he was saying, God, Jeff still moves, doesn't he? He still goes. I was like, <laughs> I and then got behind him a few laps, and uh, yeah, it was really looking yeah. good. Yeah, I was. was well, uh, the, well, hang on one, one second, lads. I mean, I'd, I'd have loved to be able, be able to witness this for myself, but the invite must have got lost in the post somewhere. <laughs> oh, it was a last minute. It was very much last yeah. minute. Yeah, 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 yeah. Very much like, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Just trying to get some stealth practice in, Swanee. So next time we ride at Hawkstone when we do the sighting lap, that, you know, I can absolutely. Because next time you're putting the camera on and I'm going, to, I'm riding in front of you. So oh, I want to look on point. <sighs> That means keep up. It's fast though, and I don't really like. I'm not a fan of that, really. It was good, Tom. Uh, you is looking like he's having fun today. First time I've been to VIP. It's a, it's a good good place. Uh, you seemed happy, content. But let's go back to the weekend. First round of the Mitch and MX Nationals for you as a pro rider. Um, you know, new team and everything this year. I know you've had a couple of races leading in, but you know, how was it from a commentary point of view and from what we heard? Uh, a lot of people saying that the track was naughty, like properly brutal. Um, it looked it from the commentary booth as we were drinking coffee and eating cake. Yeah, it was honestly the only reason I wrote today was because I've literally I just recovered from to that, from the weekend today. So I was right, that, that makes three of us, by the way. <laughs> it, was, it just took me the whole week to recover. And honestly, it's one of the savagest tracks I've rode. So rough, so rough. But that place is hard enough already. And then to see in the condition it was at the weekend, it was prime, like really good. But any of the day, it was such hard work. And I think even if you, if you saw the last pro race, a lot of people were starting to flag towards the end. But um, it was great. But yeah, savage, absolutely savage. How did it work for you um, with the with the you know the two motos over two days it's something new something that the mitch and mx national are trying they're not saying it's definitely going to stay in stone but they just want to try it for this year to go and give you guys more opportunity to earn money um it, you know obviously when you're a youth rider and you've come up through the mitch and mx nationals you used to ride in two days but then when you come a pro and i suppose you put all the effort back into one day did you find it tougher than you imagined going back to doing two days of racing it was difficult, like the recovery. I haven't done I haven't done two days of racing for a few years now. I know the GPs was different, but I say that's a lot less riding as well because you just you're all with the GP with the EMX I did. You did qualifying and then one race, and that was it for your that's your day. And you recovered. And you don't do one race in the morning. You're done. So, but this was a lot more riding over two days. And 
I was saying I haven't done it for years. So I was a little bit, I was, I was wondering how I was going to recover. And I think everyone woke up Sunday morning, like in bits, like my back was in bits. But it was um, after you did a warm up and I actually felt okay, to be honest. But um, it was very good. I, I did like actually ride, riding the two days. And I think for the expert riders, that side is great for them because some of them are still not knowing if they if they can run in like the pro class. I think it's good for them so they can really have a good taste of what it's going to be like if they did move up. Uh, and then for us, it's more bike time, more race time. And like I said, it's, more, it's another opportunity to earn some more money. You put some more money in your pocket. So why not, I say? Come on, Swanee, I can tell you there, you're pondering. Look, you're like a thinking man. Yeah, I thinking was. I, I mean, I um, it was only probably only like I don't know three, four years ago since I stopped doing like masters and stuff and riding two days. Um, it's hard, man. Even as an amateur, it's really it's hard. Uh, and I think like the guy like, like to you, train. Is that your yeah. train going by? That's brilliant. <laughs> that is. And everyone else, they're going. They're, they're at such a high level. Um, I, I, I was actually, I wanted to know what the recovery process would be like, uh, because I remember waking up sort of Sunday mornings um, after you know we been at the KWS. It was back in the day, and being like, I don't know whether I'm going to be able to ride today. You know, like your bottom of your back's done in everything. So I don't know. Like you guys seem to manage it quite well, but it was. I think the track was. It's a hard gauge because the track was was savage wasn't it i've never seen fat cats like that ever it was so rough and i was saying that's the roughest i've ever seen it and i was like okay i think a few of us were quite relieved when he said he was shortening the races back to what was it <laughs> saturday i think yeah. a lot of people were quite relieved some of us i know was saying a few little comments saying oh why have you done that but i think we all saw in that last race how many people did fade and i think it would have been for how rough the track was I think it was quite sensible to shorten the races. I, I agree, Tom. I agree. Yeah. And, I didn't. Yeah. I was saying, I was, I, was, I was in Neil's ear, go, uh, Paul's ear, going, just make it a 30 plus. <laughs> Tom, only congested the days of GPs that were 40 minutes. I know, yeah. <laughs> Trying to make yeah. everyone else suffer. The old oh, it wasn't around back cats, was it? <laughs> that, worse than that, Tom. Worse than that. <laughs> 40 minutes, Christ, I did. What What were those sessions today? 15 minutes, Tom? Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't think I did the full 15 at uh, full tilt today. Is that Dave yeah. coming in the background? Oh, no, no, that could be no, your mum. That's, walking through that's the mother, shop. yeah. She's Excellent. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> a family affair. <laughs> so, so, so I've, got, to, so, I've got my mates up next to me here anyway, so... Break it down then, Tom. Just run us through your results then, if you're... <laughs> there he is. Yeah, go. Cool. <laughs> So, um, well, basically, because I'm being lazy and I, I, I can't be bothered to look them up, and because we're doing this by the seat of our pants <laughs> for the first one, um, maybe you maybe you don't want to reflect on your results, but just go through what you what your actual results were in MX2 then over the weekend. Um, Can you remember? So, I'm trying to remember. Saturday was a 12th and a 13th, which wasn't great at all, to be honest. It really was. Both races, I started up the front. Like, first race, got my best start of the year, third. And I thought, right, I'm having it now. All, all I had was Conrad and Ashton in front of me. I thought, right, I've got a good start. Just go with them. And I just locked up. Arms were just pumped. And I just literally went back, back, back. And I just got mugged. Both races. Both races, I just got mugged. That's good. That's there was a lot of guys struggling with arm pump at the weekend. Yeah. I, I, yeah, I, a lot of people seem to struggle with And I think it's to do... With, it's actually got a really hard base, Fat Cats, and the, with the bumps and stuff. So I, I've always personally really struggled there. Um, so Saturday really did just fall back, back. And I had, no, I had no answer for the people that passed me. I was just trying to get to the end and manage my arms. Um, then Sunday had a little bit of a regroup. Um, and I think with the extra riding, like we were just talking about the two days, actually helped with my arms. Um, so Sunday was a bit better. And I just put myself in good good spot so I got a really good start I was thinking I was fourth out of everyone at the fourth these off the start and then um I just dropped back a little bit which I knew was going to happen and then I think I came around because the red flag came out um I think I got seventh in the end in the 250s I'm not sure overall and then last race was much very much the same I actually made moves going forward which was different for a whole the whole weekend where I was the actually one getting past 
I was doing in the past in the last one. And um, I think I finished sixth in the end. I was um, a lot better Sunday, a lot better Sunday. So yeah. I really, and I've got, I, I dismissed Saturday a little bit because I just just was not great, really, really not great. But you know, you're up and running. Obviously, last year was pretty good. I just looked at the result. You finished, was it fifth or sixth in the series last year in MX, in MX Nationals? MX yeah, I think, I think you were... yeah, I think I hanged on fifth last year. Yeah. I think so. Well, yes. it's early days. You know, there's five there's five rounds to go. So what's it like, you know, on the obviously the new team? You rode with Roland for quite a lot, you know, the hardcore, yeah, and varying other sponsors. But Roland was obviously behind you for quite a while doing your motors on the Yamaha and, and helping you out. So how's it going with Tim? Tim's Tim's top man. I had a good chat with him today. He he's, yeah. he's right back. He's right back in it, isn't he? He's loving it again. Yeah, yeah. Like he, he went away from it for a while. Yeah, I think he went away for it, but he you say that, but he's he's actually always supported riders. Like yeah. there's still riders I still find out about today that he supports. He's just Callum, get your C V in. That's it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I might yeah. Uh, the the raw footage of me riding with the, without my top on, you know, it might it might be into that. Not pleasing. I've got chambers yeah. tattooed, couldn't I? Like, <laughs> well, this is where I mean, you know, I'll be, I, I know you won't you won't take this. You know, you're a blank canvas. I you're am. There to be, <laughs> <laughs> you're there. Um, there to be sponsored. I tell you what, though, they've managed, you, whatever you've managed to do, um, that bike's good out the start. I know. You, I mean, credit to you as well, but it it goes, doesn't it? It's fast. And I've seen it at VIP, and it seems you know it's a strong package, definitely. It's a strong package, and we've um, we've had Steve from Multitech this year to do help with my bikes. Um, so Steve, you know, Steve always does a good bike, so he's very good. I've actually, because obviously I'm my bigger size and everything, I, I normally do struggle with my starts. Um, for some reason, a fat cat, so I've got them dialed. So I was, I'm hoping to carry that one in now for for the rest of the season. Yeah. It does so much easier but um but no no like i was saying tim tim is such a helpful person that he, he helps so many riders that even i don't know about but yeah you see the the focus has been put really into the team like we started last year obviously i only got a few races with him last year so we carried on to this year and anything i need he's got my back really so that's for a team that's what you want to be looking for isn't it you want that comfort so um it's really been good, and the whole team atmosphere is brilliant. If you look at our setup, um, everyone turns out like Mike and Jade and everything. They help set up, and it's a bit of a family. So everyone's got their jobs, and it's fun racing, really. What? No, um, where, where are you at, Tom? Regards of now your career path, then you know because obviously, like the EMX thing, you, you've had a go at that. You've done all that. Listen, we talked about yeah. it before. I know, we're, I know we're getting away a little bit from, from the Mitch and MX Nationals, but, you know, you're still – how old are you now? You're still a young man. Yeah, I just turned 20. So, yeah, um, it's it's really been up in the air the, actually, the last few weeks. You wouldn't be, believe the amount of people come up to me saying, oh, you're going 450, so you're going 450. And I'm just like, I don't really want to push it yet, you know what I mean? Because, like I said, I, I really want to have a good – Good go at the 250s. Now I'm getting closer to the top, so really want to put some effort into it. But at the same time, the 450 is sort of calling me being six foot three and how much I weigh. I'm competing against people. Six foot three, <laughs> Callum. Yeah. Hey, do you know what I mean? There's you and I on the start struggling to touch on the one we one foot. I'm, I'm <laughs> praise the Lord for the electric start. Finally, I wish they was around <laughs> when I was racing. And he's there, all flat footed, like bloody. You know, Olsen. What no, I'm doing is my legs. About three inches. Just to start wearing those Cuban heels when we get out there. You're a big lad, Tom. Like, but for a big like, I think your style um, on the bike, you don't. It's weird actually because you are really tall, but you don't look like majorly gangly. I don't think when you ride, no. you, you, you wouldn't no, like. I've, you look quite compact. Yeah. I don't know if it's your style. It's not like it doesn't look like it hinders you too much. No, no, I don't think it ever hinders me, but a lot of people say to me, I oh, just why why are you wasting your time? Just go just go four fifty, go four fifty. But I just think I don't really want to because as soon as I go four fifty, that's it then, isn't it? It's like well, there's no coming back really, is there? Until not really. Out. Yeah, you see the odd rider drop down, but uh, for me when I go four fifty, that's it. So I'm trying to maximise these years as much as I can. Like so going back to the EMX and for the EMX this year, we we're, we're committing to the the closer sort of ones and um, cool. really good go at that. So 
uh, on top of the British and then the MX Nationals. So, and I'll just reassess the situation after this year if I really feel like oh, I've had a good year, but now it's time to move on. I'll go 450. But um, if I get to the end of this year and I've, I've come quite close to some goals and stuff that I think, oh, one more year I can do just that bit better, I will stay 250. So um, it's all up in the air at the moment. We're not too sure. Yeah, he's not moving up until he wins the MX Nationals crown, basically. Yeah. <laughs> no, okay, there's no yeah. age limit. No, the, no yeah. thing, the thing is, Jeff, I think Tom has actually got the potential to probably win a British title. Um, whether it oh, be I wasn't joking. I wasn't joking. No, whether it be ours or or um or the or the British, um it, yeah. it you you're definitely capable of it. It's just um you never it's always the case of like you like you're gonna go booking you're like right i'm staying mx2 and then you'll get someone like comrade go yeah i'm gonna race the british this year and you're like oh, damn it, <laughs> <laughs> it is like that. i know you, you, sh you shouldn't think like that like oh because he's doing that's that's the championship gone but you do you do everyone does if you know what yeah, I mean, so. well, you, you, of, of course you do of course you do yeah but he, he's <laughs> well -class, you know what i mean so if i did get beaten by him there's no shame is there so no. Um, it's it's all about personal goals for me. If I if I I always set some goals at the start of the year, and if I can reach those, that's perfect. So if I get to the end of the year and feel like there's nothing more I can do with the two fifties, I'll I will go four fifty, but I'm not too sure yet. Yeah, see how it goes. Yeah. Well, look. So obviously you're up and running. Are you, was you going to take a phone call then, Swanee? No, I'm good. I'm back. Uh, you buy, I sell low. You obviously take business twenty four seven with Swanee. Quite so it should be. Let's very quickly then. Right. So this is a, re a, a review show. That when that train thing goes by, by the way, that's I amazing. Cover the mic. <laughs> <laughs> Do, you know Do you know what? I could. I could. Go, it's the back doors open. I could go and shut it, but like, I mean, it depends whether you can just. Is, give your, me is your studio literally under a, a railway line? <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> I, I mean, um, I, will, I will go and close the back door if you want. No, I might have to leave in a minute anyway to do some technical things, and you can take over a little bit if I if I have to do that. But anyway, okay. uh, this is this. Believe me, uh, people, this this show will have a few more whistles and bells on it as we go along, because <laughs> um, we were going to do it. I said it on the live stream that we were going to do this next Wednesday. Um, a few things have cropped up, and we decided to push it out and get it out to you. Uh, this week so uh, not quite as prepared as we want to be but we're doing it and and tom's come on uh mainly because i collared him today at vip so, right you're, you're yeah. coming on a show tonight um right tom uh you, i want you to get involved with this let's talk about the results then so i'm going to start with the 85s to just give a rundown on the weekend uh jump in at any time you two that you want to discuss this uh if any riders take uh no. Okay, so in the in the big wheel class at the weekend, that was sponsored by uh, Sintel Lubricants. <laughs> Billy Askew uh, took the win in the big wheel class. Then Ben Musto, Tyler Hooley. Now Tyler had three moto wins on the go, didn't he? Um, in the big wheel class, and then apparently he crashed in the last one. I think he might have broken his collarbone or something, or shoulder or something. I'm hearing. Um, do you watch I mean, any of the? I don't know. Like we, I, can you remember? He came into the the pit area, didn't he? Because we were, we was thinking, oh, hang on a minute, what's gone on here? But I, I, I thought it was a mechanical. But I mean, obviously, it's uh, news to me that he, he actually broke himself. Um, yeah, it's a shame that is because he looks so good. Do you get to is watch? That, any uh, of that? Sorry, is that number one hundred and one? Yeah, yeah. I'm not not really great with names. See, he was, he was if, if that's true, that's a shame because he was looking good. I did watch yeah. a few pieces. I really do like how he. Are you right? And he's got a great little style, yes. Yeah. Tom, answer me this, because um, Dad would have taught you this. Uh, and be honest, do you, you know, like as a kid, you went used to go out and watch the pros. Now you're a pro. Have you ever been out and watched the kids and seen them doing something or a line and ended up using it? I know, know that it's different on the smaller bikes because you, the track develops differently. But even in like the rookie class, if you've gone, oh, that's pretty cool. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try that. Yeah, definitely. I, we, I always watch. You know, I mean, we always go watch the racing. Uh, line choice wise, I don't. I don't normally. Um, sometimes, yeah, they, they pick some good lines out, but not all the time. Yeah. So no. I, I <laughs> was the expert class or something, where seeing what they're doing. But 
Um, no, but like I said, some of the talent that's coming through that like I watch is great. You know what I mean, like the big wheels at the weekend and the smalls because they're mixed together. Some great little riders in there, and some of the stuff they're doing is impressive. Like I looked at that, I don't think I was doing that on the on the big wheel or the small wheel or anything like that. So um, we, I still watch all the racing. No, it's all it's all good stuff. You can you can I, always. I don't know about that, Tom. I think you know you had a pretty hmm. pretty good eighty five cc career, yeah, didn't you? Let's be honest. He was good. He was good, wasn't he? Uh, <laughs> yeah. One thing, like you know, from the other perspective, like the amateur riders, like having the pros ride on both days. Um, from what I used to, from back in the day when I, when the pros would just ride on a Sunday when I was doing, you know, amateur nationals and stuff, uh, the track would develop way better. You know, like the lines would be better. Every, you know, like when the pros went out for qualifying, it just used to set the track up so good. So I, I, I wonder whether that, that's better for them as well. It might be worth like sort of reflecting that the other way as well, because it does seem, you know, you guys seem to make the, the, the lines on the track more, I suppose, flowy, you know. Yeah, because we're, we're in the past, we've had that practice day in the evening on the Saturday, the, the mm. practice and after. The track is just obviously wrecked, but then it's so different. If you compare it to the end of the end of the day on Sunday, the track's completely different. Like, yeah, way different. And lines and stuff like that. So I think it is now with us having us there both days, um, the track is now quite similar both days, but... Um, it's it, they're all better lines, I think, because sometimes yeah. I've been there for the practice session and I've gone, how how have people even get into these lines? So, so t- <laughs> it's when you go on an um, inside and just smash your smash your hand. Yeah, and smash, yeah, on a post or something. It's that close, or the ruts are like edgy where they're not fly around. But I'm not saying we're perfect. But every time we seem to go out there, it's it's the the track is always seems to be better on Sunday. Tom was thinking that the day when he was following me round, thinking, <laughs> how, how, has he, how has he got so tight on that corner? Well, because I'm on pickover. That's why. Um, go, go into the small wheels then. Again, this is full part of the Sintel lubricants thing. Cole McCulloch smashed it. Four wins out of four. Obviously, son of, of Philip, um, who was a top rider back in the day from over there in Northern Ireland. And he got some, he actually pulled a couple of hole shots, I think, on the small wheel against the big wheels. Oh, really? Oh, so really? he was on it. Reese Jones got second, number 104. Brandon Buckley got third. So a great start for Cole McCulloch. Um, he's up and running on his GRT whole shot machine. That was cool. But um, he, that, he was running up with the big wheels the whole yeah. week. It was yeah. really, really good seeing. And I think the difference between a big wheel and a small wheel that we, like the week would have been massive. Yeah. Like massive. Absolutely. No, he, he was good. We'll get on to He also... Uh, is in the running for another championship, which we'll get on to in a minute. Um, in the 125s, or the MXY1, it was Jaden Haig that came in third. I think he rides for SJP Moto, KTM. Ollie Colmer had a solid start to his championship in second, but no doubt about it. Bailey Johnson, number nine, was was pretty pretty on it. it I love watching that class, the, the rookie class, you know, because they're yeah. right there on the cusp, aren't they, of getting into adults. You remember that, Tom? What it was like, you know, been thinking I'm nearly there. I'm going to be a pro soon. Yeah, it, it it goes so quickly as well. Like in the amount of time, like you're doing your last year of the in the youth, and then you blink and you're already in the pros in the next season. So um, I did watch that class, and that that Johnson was very good, very good. Yeah. Especially when it got rough, I you just found some energy from where everyone was just slacking a little bit. He just go to the end, and he was very impressive to watch. To be honest, so. Um, I do. I, mean, I do remember those times. The good times, obviously. I think we're going to see Callum. We're going to see Charlie Heyman back. He took a big hit at the first first day, didn't he? Really, and it was damage limitation for him. But yeah, it's a shame. Um, I, I do want to give a shout out to uh, to somebody who uh, jumped on me. Um, so <laughs> it's the guy that teams <laughs> um, Bailey Johnson's engines, uh, DVS Racing. <laughs> He was yeah. out. Bailey got good starts all weekend. You didn't mention him. Uh, I said, I said to him, I didn't know, mate. I didn't know. So you know, I just want to give a shout out to uh, you know DVS. Done. Um, there you go. There we are. So you know, there, there we are. That's the water under the bridge. <laughs> oh, we do that for the next round. I said, for, you know, first round, got to get to used to all the new teams, new names. It does take a little while, not yeah, as much it, as they do. I said to him though, Jeff. I said, look, the more info we get given, like you know, him mm. dropping me a message, help me out. So next time. I know. So if That's anyone it. the same, just let us know. 
Absolutely, yes. Please do more information. Information is key. So in the um, in the MXY two two hundred and fifty championship, it was uh, Alfie Jones taking the overall with four emphatic mm. race wins. He is he was he's just strong for that class. Mm. He's a big kid, and he paced the races perfectly, didn't he? Just just went at it. Jude Morris was in there on on um on his gas gas, and then Tyler Westcott. I think he was also on a gas gas. Got third. But that's going to be a good championship, all those guys in. One, two, fives racing as well, together. So. Really close. Really close. Like, the, yeah. whole, the whole way through, there wasn't anybody who, like, literally checked out either, which, which is <laughs> it's quite good to see, isn't it? So you might get some people that might be better on the hard pack store for when we're going into the next rounds after after Hawkstone. Um, but I think that class is going to be really fun to watch the whole year because of how close it is at the front. This is going to be, this is a point right now, this is an intermission. We're not going to take a break like we do on the live stream, by the way, when we put the adverts up and whatever. What's actually going to happen now, Callum doesn't know it, is he is going to think on his feet and ask Tom some questions or come up with some kind of quiz while I actually just disappear out of the screen for uh, 30 <laughs> seconds to sort out a technical issue. The technical issue being I've rushed up here uh, to the office to do this um, what are you eating? <laughs> oh, is, is that a spring roll? Yes, it is. Wow. Size of it. Well, you you you're going to leave it with me. I'm in. I'm Tom, eating. Tom, you do not get a figure like Callum's without putting their work. <laughs> <laughs> this this takes. Says me, who to be honest is not you know not too far behind. Um, right, entertain the people watching. And I what I was going to say was my technical issue is I ran up here. Um, from coming back from riding the VIP, got stuck in traffic, three hour drive home. Like I said, we wasn't going to do this this week, but we're doing yes, it anyway, just to get it out there. And um, I didn't bring my charger for my computer. You've so not if been I don't find a yet. charger in a few seconds, well, I've got a little bit of time. This will be the end of this first show anyway. So keep him entertained <laughs> while I go and find a charger. <laughs> okay, Jeff's just going to go to the toilet. Um, Tom. <laughs> um, Me and you. Yeah, just me and you. What was I going to say to you? So, Fat Cats of the Weekend, absolutely brutal. What, why do you think the track was so rough? I've never seen it like that. Well, they, they, they prep it really well, obviously, for, for a big event. So, they, they rip it and they watered it. And I think it because it's been so dry, though, um, it was dry for that spot. And then but before that, we've had so much rain. So, it's yeah. the weather um, on top of them ripping it and everything. So... We just, I think everyone just saw different fat cats they've never seen before. Um, it was, it was unreal, mate. It was like long, me, when me and Jeff went out. I mean, this is when I thought, oh god, this is going to get rough because me and Jeff went out and did that like um, GoPro lap on the Friday. Yeah. And I have never ridden fat cats where like you roll, you know, like when you go lommel and like you're just doing a sighting lap, and if you just roll off the throttle, you feel like you feel get weighted over. Okay. The foot. You're like, whoa, yeah. god, that nearly yeah, yeah. got me there. If it was like that, mate, when we first went out of the track, I was like, this is ridiculous. Yeah. I was shutting off and I was like, oh, I'm going to yeah. you know, no, it, was, it was good, but I, th I think that's what it, should, it needs to be, though, doesn't it? So, yeah, um, it was it was very, very well prepped, I think, even though it was so hard. Mm. Uh, but it was it was great. And I just uh, where we've been there like last year, obviously, we had the rain, so it was muddy. But I think it was going to be like that for that if mm. it stayed. So, um, but all the time we've done big race there, even though we've, we've had British in the past, it's always been wet, so it's always slowed the pace and never roughed yeah. up. Right Can like you remember that, the first so. time they did the Maxis there? It was absolutely drenched. <laughs> I wasn't there. I've seen the DVDs and stuff. Oh, like, my God. It was yeah. mental. Absolutely mental. <laughs> yeah, that's what sleet and snow and something like that, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, Hawkstone. What do, well, I think the weather going into there is going to be great as well. We've got quite a few weeks by the looks of it, like looking at radars and stuff, good weather. But that place yeah. doesn't anywhere near the same as Fat Cats, does it? So I don't know whether the two-day format might um, might be a little... As much as Hawkton is hard, I think on that track, there's way more places where you can actually get a bit of breath, a bit of a breath, like going up the hill. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. But that's the problem with Fat Cats. There's, I don't think there's, any, there's no time to breathe. It's no. one, it's fast... Um, and then, like I mentioned earlier, it's got that hard base. And when it's rough, you're just hitting edges all the time, going through the yeah. impact of your arms. Uh, you've got jumps, whoops, constantly to deal with. We're actually hopes that it's more that traditional sand track where there is, even though it's still hard work, there is those times to breathe. Yeah, 
I remember I, I used to race um, Hawkston. I, I would just be praying for that hill, or just just so you can just, <laughs> just so you can just you know, like get a few good old breathfuls of air. And then like when I went when I dropped off the top, I don't know whether you're the same. When I dropped off the top and back in, it was like in my head, right? That's another lap. Yeah, that's you know, yeah. like because you just had that little bit of time where you just get yourself back together. Picked up. Yeah, you'll be uh, we'll be praying for that when we just do a two lap track edit. <laughs> 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 oh, you know it. You know, I, oh, mate. Like, I was helping. I what, you, what you need to do is do like a hill climb race, I think. Oh, That'd be good to watch. Good shout. Start yes. from the bottom up to the top. Let's that is do brilliant. It. Let's that do is, I, I need, yeah, let's do that. Do you know what? Obviously, um, without, you know, shameless plug, he's got his bike behind him after all. Um, hold on, always stat side, isn't it? We got our Helter Skelter hill climb coming up before Hawkstone. Hey. So I, I should yeah. be in good form for that. Well, yeah. Yeah. Should we actually do that? Should we do a hill climb? Let's do that. That's what we do on the Friday for everybody's viewing pleasure that's there on the Friday when we got to yeah, do the track for you. Oh, God, I need to dig a 450. Now, do you know what? I'm on a, no, I'll, bring a I'll bring a 250. You bring your, like, so it's even. Like, I know I've got a stone on you, but I'll be on an Austrian bike, so I've got a few more horses and all. So it might be. <laughs> might be. Yeah, I, I think you're going to win that. I, you know, I'm just playing it down early. Yeah. Um, yeah, we do that. I will, um, get, I will get aggressive if it's a competition. I don't doubt that. I don't <laughs> doubt that one bit. I've, I've already seen what you like. I know what you like. You're a nightmare. <laughs> um, so get moving in. Let's get go back to some of the top three. Oh, here we go. The old choo choo train going by again. It's all right. It's all right. We've got it. Let's get into the uh, Broadcliff um, construction a Pico Factory Racing Clubman Class MX2. This was kind of cool. Ben Wainwright took the overall win at the weekend. He had uh, three race wins and I think a fourth or something like that. Max Fletcher was pretty consistent. But Daniel Shutt, I'm just looking at the results, his first ever national win on the, in the MX2 class, buzzing. He came over. They were all static. They were almost in tears. Can you remember your first race win, Tom? Yeah, first race win, you have to go back quite far. Yeah, but you always, you always remember, don't you? Um, <laughs> My first and last time, you go back quite far. <laughs> <laughs> I, haven't, I haven't quite had that national British Championship win yet, so um, we're still working towards that. Fair play. Here come. Keep chugging away at it, mate. Keep chugging away at it. <laughs> yeah, that's it, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, it, it happened. You're, 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 you're there on the cusp. Um, there's Franklin. Does Ben give you a stick? Because he won, he won a moto at Fat Cat last year, if I remember rightly, didn't he? Didn't he yeah, win a moto in the last year? He, he rode so well. Like, yeah. Was, obviously, he, he was, he's quite strong around there. Like, sand tracks in general, he's very good. So I knew yeah. he was going to be good, but he was just on another level that day. And he just, I think, two, two consistent rides. And, yeah, bang, bagged an overall. So, yeah, he's but, done it. Like, Tom, that, that can just happen. Like, I mean, it happened from yeah. even I was, you know, you know how long I've been around Spinksy. Like, yeah. it just happened, like out of nowhere. Like, like you just got to have that good start, and and you know, and and everything just go the right way because you can do yeah. it. You've got the speed to do it. It's just everything's got to go right, hasn't it? You know, like yeah, you you'll do well, it. I had my I had my best result last year in the MX Nationals. I got a second in one race in the two fifties, and but and to be honest, gen, generally it was the easiest race I've ever done. Mm, put yourself in the right position from the start. Got, put myself in the right position, and I had a good start. And then I think I only had to deal with Gilbert. Um, once he got past me, he, he went a little bit. And then after that was I had a 450 block him and all the other 250s behind me. So <laughs> um, so that helped. And yeah, it was one of the easiest races I've done. So it, it, to talk about it, it's so easy, but actually when it comes down to the moment, it's so hard because I've had some real tough races where you're back in the pack. And you're, in double hard than what I did in that race getting second. So yeah, it's, it's a funny old game. Callum, you spoke. Uh, you 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 know you were spoken words of wisdom there when you teed up that that question, Callum. Thanks very much. Fair play. No, no, genuinely, uh, it's a nice one. Um, what I was going to say was moving into the Clubman MX1. So in that class again by Broadcliffe uh, Construction and a Pico Factory racing. It was Matty Pocock came in third overall ahead of Ivan Kurt and Alex Christopher. Now, I think Ivan's from Ireland, Northern Ireland, I think, and Alex Christopher, they literally went, it was all down on the last race, basically. 
Mm. Um, Alex Christopher won the first one, then Ivan Kerr won the next two, and they were tied on points. Well, not tied on points. Basically, whoever won the last one was going <laughs> to win it, and it was Alex Christopher. So that was that was pretty cool. He was knackered. <laughs> we interviewed him afterwards. He was absolutely had a job to even hold up his bike and talk to me. In the I had uh, I had Math doing the typical Pocock um, thing, texting me as I'm still commentating on races. Swanee, 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 I'm on the podium because if I'm not, I'm going to get off. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> I don't that know. is. I don't know. <laughs> Can I just say on this first uh, rewind show that we're going to do? I just want to because we won't bring it up on the live stream so much, but um, me and Callum. Are not as much as we like to think we probably are we're not the oracles of all knowledge mm. all right we, we don't know the answer to every question that goes on at the weekend so uh for people messaging us texting us uh throughout the show particularly when we're trying to do live show we don't know what happened to dylan walsh 10 seconds after it happened no more than anyone else <laughs> um so yeah so uh by all means try and put us off with texas and a bit of banter <laughs> uh, but we're not a, we're not a public information service it, we to be fair we probably know less than than the others because we're we're literally just got, got for people who don't know we're literally looking at a screen the size of a laptop um and commentating on the race we're not actually even looking out the windows um uh, we could be in a we could be in a hotel and do the same job you know we don't you know, it's That'd literally nice but we, we're so tunnel vision that you we don't have a clue about what's going on anywhere else you know that we're just doing a job aren't we we are indeed uh let's move on into the i'm going to move on to the uh amateur what do i just done amateur so the amateur class mx2 again this was brought to you by broadcliffe and a pico uh dan broth finished third in mx2 uh, David Finnemore second, and Sean Springer. Now, Sean uh, from down in, uh, I think he's from Kent or Essex. Uh, let's just say yeah, that, way, that, way, that way on. His bike yeah, was good. He, yeah, yeah, he was right. Again, Tom, uh, his, uh, his bike's done by Multitech. So there mm. you go. You, you're under one, you got one of them, so you know what's going on there. That's it. Yeah. Um, good engines. And then in the, yeah. Then in the uh, let's go back here to then to the is the train again. That's brilliant. This is going to be an ongoing thing. <laughs> I, really, uh, I, I could have shut the door, like you know. Nah, but you didn't. You didn't want. Then it. in the um, you have the train in the expert MX1. Sorry, it was John Kirk, Scott Hale, and Sean Wainwright. So there, Sean Wainwright's leading the series. They're off to a good start. Um, the ex the, the amateur is pretty yeah. good. Let's move quickly on to the experts, okay, Tom? Because you were part of this on the. Saturday. Not an expert Luke shutting the door. Okay. <laughs> the door is being closed. <laughs> My God. What, what is, is going it? on? The door's now closed. Look, you want no train noise. Now <laughs> like, it's done. Funny, that that sounded like you're in like some kind of underground layer. That was like some like a, I can imagine a steel door about that thick being <laughs> It is like it is like that. But listen, right? You don't want the trains. You either want the trains or you like look, the doors now closed. Still going right? on. Trains. <laughs> Christ, like Hitler's bunker. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah. What was I saying? I mean, that was so noisy. <laughs> I, <laughs> <even, laughs> I could have um, just muted my mic. Like, I but you could have done. I would not do that because of the comedy, um, you know. Complete professionalism, we didn't do that. Um, so in the expert class, uh, it was Jake Preston in MX2 that finished third. Obviously, Jake is now, I think, running and managing uh, Spiral Graphics. Tom Mur Murphy on the Acer United, Gas Gas for second. No mistake in the winner, though, Bobby Bruce. Uh, Tom, your opinion on Bob? You, you've been there, come through as a bit of a protege. How do you think he's coping with sort of stepping up out of youth? He's he's unreal. He really is, isn't he? Um, I was never that good. I, I'll tell you that I was never that good. He so I got to race him on Saturday. I did see him in the first race, uh, but then I did see him in the second race when he flew past me. So he was he was on it. Like he, yeah. you, I watched the race on Sunday. You look at him. He was everything's so neat and he's just doesn't look like he's even trying hard and he's really got he's got that bike dialed hasn't he and he, he's riding style everything is about him so so good so I it's all real to watch isn't it it's all oh, just it was, it was it was a pleasure to watch really wasn't it so 
it makes things look so effortless where there's me my elbows down and just flying but he's just floating on top um had another little stab at him on this in the second race saturday tried to get him back but i, just, I didn't I, I didn't have him i just didn't have it in me so he he was it just shows that's he's he's on the trail to be mm. something good and i think that's great to see something coming out of uk to be that good at that young age on the one two five definitely it reminds me of the whole james dunn phenomena back in the day i mean obviously i yeah. know it's like the right way james obviously had some issues when he actually got to pro which you know sort of hindered i think that is is um you know his peak but Jesus, like it's the same. It's like watching it all over again, and it's like another chance at it. You know, was having a kid who could, you know, potentially be world champion material. You know, it's really yeah. good. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's that hopefully that the interview that we did with Conrad on the live stream. Hopefully, he'll watch that and take that on board. I I sat down and did a man and a van with him on the weekend, and I got to say, even though I've worked with with Bobby, he was on the green for a little while. Um, he's really got his feet on the ground, and he's you know, so he's got to do that obviously because. You know, you've just mentioned there how good he could possibly be, branded around. So, so as long as he does that and stays injury free, which of course is the big ask, isn't it? That's never easy. Um, but yeah, good luck, Bob. Hope it all goes smashingly well for you. Let's move on to the um, the Expert MX One class. Then that was the Expert MX Two overall. Expert MX One Championship. Where are they here? Um, so that was Ben Edwards. Uh, no, but. Help me out here, Tom. I don't know Ben that well. I think Ben's Scottish. Ben, if you're not Scottish and we've got it wrong, sorry, do you know yeah, Ben? Yeah, he is. I think he is yeah. Scottish. Yeah, so I don't know Ben too well, but I know him to say hello to, but um, yeah. I know he comes up from Scotland, um, comes down from yeah. Scotland, say, and sure he, he, in, he appeared in a really good display at the weekend, didn't he? He, was he very did, good. yeah. Very good. He was solid. Sean Southgate, last year's champion, came in second. Uh, he took the final motor winner of the weekend. Said Again, just said, God, he was hanging. He's like, that was brutal, which it was. And Jordan McCaw came in third. So so that's where they're at with that class. Um, some good racing all round, obviously, uh, across the board with the expert class. I particularly like this concept of mixing you guys up on the, on the Saturday. I thought it worked. I think it works. Yeah, Quite, I think it's going to work for the expert riders to get dragged along. Um, yeah, definitely. You obviously didn't get a chance to do that, did you, Tom? You know, you were just in in non class, then moved up. And you had to. So, you know, for you guys, it keeps you on your toes, Tom. Like you just said, you won't want an expert rider doing you. No, um, no, no, definitely not. <laughs> even though you've just been man enough to admit it. I, 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 I'm going to admit it when when someone when someone flies past you like that, you can. I'm not going to make up excuses. I think he's he's yeah. money. He's going to be he's he's the next best thing. I think for for us. So um, all I can try is the next race is not to get that done to me again. But you, <laughs> we, you just got you got to put your hands up. Like yeah, no, like, they um, yeah. the the I I thought that on the Saturday when the experts was mixed with the pros, they for me was some of the best racers, actually um definitely like because uh, you just saw some guys like um josh taylor for example in the 450s just a full send mode full <laughs> send mode. and like he's a bit like that anyway i know he is but it was just really good to see him on the limit and it was like you know, you know he's he's there you know he, he's he's like in he's in around 10th at the time i was thinking i was like wow that's pretty impressive but and that that's what's good for those guys because it just gives them that bit of a leg up doesn't it like i mean i know it's annoying for the pro riders because they're probably thinking whoa i don't want these guys showing too much you know like showing too much of a of an example on me but then that's your job to uh to knit that in the board isn't it at the same time so. yeah. yeah but even even in the pro class on the saturday because we're not mixed with the mx1 sometimes when you mix with the mx1 you're you can get lost in the race where yeah. Yeah. you're battling a 450 for the whole time, even though it doesn't do anything for your result, but there's a 250 rider ahead of him, so you've got to get rid of him and then go on to that. So it was actually a good opportunity for the MX2 to see the like the best of the MX2 all bunched together yeah. and not having anyone like in the middle of that or getting hassled from a four, 450 or anything like that. So it was... That was also a good thing about, I think, the two-day format. So you have 250s had their blast on the Saturday and then it's back into 
back to business on the Sunday as well yeah. with the forty. Yeah. yeah. Good. I was going to last answer the question. I was going to ask you if what you thought of that, if you think it worked, but you've just you just answered that. So there you go. Yeah. Thanks for that, Tom. I think it just it gives the two fifties especially that little bit of like time to shine and display themselves, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. And also then people like Bobby as well to to display themselves in front of pro teams as well. You know, saying like you know I'm I'm I've got the pace. Look at me, sort of thing. Yeah. Uh, you know, instead of just looking at lap times, which we can all do, it's actually different when you actually line up and race in each other. Uh, we, we've seen it for years. Like, there's a lot of... I used to do it. I mean, I used to look at lap times like, oh, I'm, I'm way up there. I mean, I've yeah, metric, that. isn't it? But in reality... Yeah. When you you like, jump into that class and then you realise, oh, wow, it's it's a lot different. Yeah. So, it, this being introduced, I think it's perfect for that. So, you're not just looking on lap times anymore. You're in the real thing without having the extra pressure of the 450s mm. as well because i think that's a very it was a very big jump for when i done it was from that's why I, I, i've seen some people go from the mxy2 class it's straight to the pros mm. i think that's a massive jump because you're mixed in with the 450s and it's the 20 best 250s in the country it's not like yeah, i normal, phase down normal. a little bit like it's a the 20 top. best yeah, yeah. So I, when I done it, I deliberately went to the expert MX2 class at the time, and it was a good build because you had a little bit of the back end of the pro class coming into there sometimes. So it was a good mix. And then I used to go to the British and get um, used to get like bashed about at the British, and then come back to there and actually have a little bit of success near the front, and then go back to the British. And then for the following year, and then it was a good. It allowed me going to the next year all quite confident and then okay you're at the 450s now but i think you're that one year of building was so much better and then just jumping straight into that mm. that, that's nice to hear so yeah so you think the stepping stone of of how they've got the former at, at the mitchell mx nationals powered by milwaukee mm. is is pretty much on point you know for a rider for to, sure yeah yeah for yeah. sure i mean we, we see it we, we've talked about it before and with the emx program the one two five two fifties very rare you'll see someone go from the 125 class into the MX2 class unless the next next big thing. But I think that, that it's necessary to go from EMX 125 to EMX 250 and then go 250. Like, let's say like that, K. DeWolf done it, hasn't he? So he's done the whole thing, even though he's done one year EMX, EMX 250, just him doing that one year, he's got the experience now to go to that next level. And I, it's very relevant to what I think the MX Nationals is. Yeah. Let's talk about the pros then. Uh, that was obviously brought to you by Mitchell, of which you're one, uh, Tom. Uh, Mitchell in and, of course, uh, Milwaukee. So, Conrad, let's just quickly touch on that. Take it away, lads. Where do you think Conrad's at from where he was two or three years ago? We interviewed him. He was so candid about it. Um, he's looking really good. He, realistically, without wanting to dump a load of pressure on him, What's your take on where do you think he'd be at in in the world GPs this year? Who wants I, to go first? <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll go. I'll go. It's, I, I had a chat with him on Sunday, and it just, even though was, I was like, he's rough, isn't it? He says, but he was like so jolly. Right? He's like, yeah, yeah, it's great, isn't it? It's great. I was like, <laughs> he's done that all day to me. Where everyone goes, oh yeah, it's so tough. But he's he says, yeah, it's hopping stuff and. I can see when he's gone past me and I've seen from videos, he's just, he's hopping stuff, he's railing, it looks like he's enjoying the ride. I think. That's what, I think that's the new thing I've seen with maybe Conrad, even though he's been so good, obviously, the last few years, but now, this year it seems that he's actually really enjoying his riding. So that hopefully that's, that's the next step to take into the GP. He's really enjoying it. And then, you know, when you're having fun, things just come so easy and mm. you're relaxed and you actually do better i find he looked like a new man yeah. hmm. he, he looked yeah. like a new he looked like a new man jeff from like when um i'd spoken to him uh early on in the day saturday just bumped into him even and he was just radiant man he was i've never seen him so um i don't know just content with himself it looked like he'd been there he just walked out of a yoga retreat um he was just <laughs> so it wasn't he? he was just so chilled out so like in the zone mind obviously in the right place i've never seen comrade quite so perfect in, in as in state of mind you know and and like the energy that you, you got from him like his vibe um so I, we could we could have a, we could actually have a british world champion 
Uh, and, I, and I do believe that. And I don't want to put pressure on it because it is added pressure to start throwing those things around. But I really just don't see why not. Yeah. Well, we're all behind him. Um, another rider that's impressed me because um, he's seemingly come from nowhere. I know he hasn't, but the, he's just gone up a level seemingly in a short period of time. John Adamson on the Gabriel Solutions uh, KTM. Yeah, brilliant. coming in second. He's he started the season strong, eh? I know this is probably difficult for you, Tom, because you're racing all these riders, so you don't want to <laughs> say how well they're doing when you've got to try and beat them. But you've got to no, say he's riding he, well. You know me. I'll, 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 again, I'll put my hands up. He's 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 riding really well, isn't he, John? So um, obviously, I've seen him in the four fifties for the last few years, and he's he's come down to the two fifties this year, and he's, he's such a strong lad, and you know he's just gonna he's gonna bulldoze his way through the track, and he's. He's <laughs> and he's he's very good. He is very strong. So he yeah. flies me quite a lot, and he, it's very it's very very impressive to see when he comes past. Like at the weekend, he was just flew past me, just hitting stuff. But he was he's so physically strong. He's he's holding it, and he's the speed is there as well. So no wonder he's doing so well. Yeah, and I hope like I mean obviously with him, um, we those guys get to ride a lot of real gnarly sand tracks, don't they, up in Scotland, like do, dunes and stuff like that. Um, I wonder, like, we'll have to see how he sort of season goes into you know, when we start getting a bit more harder base tracks and stuff. Um, see if he can keep up that momentum because <laughs> I, I've never really paid too much attention to John Adamson before, but what he was, he was brilliant at Fat Cats. He was, he was without doubt one of the better riders there, you know, yeah. out of all, all of you guys. And another, another, is it not better probably... riders, but. You know, I don't want to disrespect yeah. you, Tom, but you know, like as in, like how he looked on the bike in the, in those conditions. Oh, yeah, really, really fluent and good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. he was. Yeah. He's definitely, he's definitely on form. Another rider, I think he's got a podium before at the Mitchell MX National. I have to check that. But uh, Jamie Carpenter, who was solid mm -hmm. again, consistent third. Uh, yeah. One of your guys, Callum. We one of your sponsor, guys. Yeah, we sponsored Jamie. Um, he came to us at the start of the year. He's got this thing going where he just wanted people to chip in. You know, bits of money um like you know he has different things like 500 quid thousand quid whatever so i said to him yeah no problem we jumped on his on his program mainly because i think he's a really nice well-spoken hard-working lad there's nothing more to it than that i mean I, you, you you can go and sponsor the fastest guy in the world all the time can't you but often it's sometimes the the polite kid who, who needs a bit of a leg you know needs a bit of a leg up wants a bit of a hand and he does try doing it all himself i mean i know that like that you know they're not short of a few quid whatever you know like but he's old man's sound you know and they really do put everything into their racing a bit like your you know you and your dad actually Tom, isn't it like they go they together um, and they, they they grasp i mean i see see him working on his own bikes stuff like that it's just mint isn't it so when he asked us for a bit of money um it was it was not a problem fair play commitment, yeah it's full commitment jamie it's it's, it's good to see like he's all in He's all in. Quality, isn't yeah, he's, he's all in. That's it. And I was saying, he's, he's really good with the sponsors. I see the stuff he posts up, and I think that's what I think that's what us riders should be doing. And I think he's a good yeah. example. So um, he's a benchmark, mate. For what he does. Guys who aren't on teams, in my mind, uh, the yeah. way he does it, the way he conducts himself, his van, even when he comes to the track, he's got everyone's well, on there. You know, I, really I put gonna, a lot of time into it. I was going to bring that up. Um, He's going to probably need a little bit of extra cash because I've got to say, he's going to get a speeding ticket soon because the speed <laughs> in his old man came past me on the M on the M1 on the way home. Yeah, so he needs that extra bit of cash. But if, he travels, if he travels around like that all the time, like he's going to get plenty of speeding tickets throughout the year. Fair so, play, though. Like, you know, he, he's, Jamie is a good lad, isn't he? So... Uh, yeah. yeah, he's an example. He's an example to a lot of the young riders coming, uh, coming up. And say, yeah, that's him. Yeah, Dave, yeah. Dave, 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 just quickly bring him in. Very, I know he can't hear you because yeah, yeah, yeah. Come here, very quickly. Talking to pros, Tom. Talking to pros. Here's a here's an old one. Quick one, Dave, because I got to ask this. Right, I'm I'm asking Dave. Dave's coming onto the show because he's he was also riding at VIP today. Dave, how you, how you feeling? After you, oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm seizing up. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, look, look how brown his head is. Why is his head so <laughs> yeah, um, up? Yeah, I, caught, I did catch the sun today as well. So, uh, yeah, you're good. But that's because, Callum, 
between motos, he was he was like me between motos today. He was just slouched in a chair like that, going, <laughs> yeah. And now he's walking around the house so he doesn't seize up. I like I think, it. I think Tom's very really happy, yeah. isn't he, sir? <laughs> we were just saying, Dave. We were, uh, Tom was very complimentary. He just said at the at sort of the front of the show that uh, you taught him everything he knows, and you're a far superior rider. He did actually say that. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I, I never rode. I never rode at Tom's level at all. I was only club club level. So uh, yeah, don't yeah. be modest. Don't be modest. You don't. Need to, you don't need to be yeah, it was, I was better in enduros. I must admit, I was better in enduros. So, uh, um, but yeah, no, it was. Um, you know, it's just been it's been a great journey so far. Yeah, you know, it's been great. The thing so, I like about it, Team Grimshaw, is you're still loving it, genuinely loving it. Yeah. And that's what it's about, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, we're living the dream. <laughs> well, keep living that dream. Keep walk. Keep those bloody limbs moving. You've been stood still for too long now. You're going to start. Doing laps around the house. Yeah. Doing laps around the house. Yeah. I've got to feed the dog. <laughs> All right, fair play. You go right, that. Take, get Tom back on. Take we'll care. Good work. We'll see you soon. Um, so, talking about going into the um, obviously the the MX1 class, um, Kulas looking really strong all four motos and uh we did think there for a while didn't we that conrad was going to make history the first rider to, to 250 rider to win a moto but kulas he was having he put, none of it wasn't he, he put a stop to that did he like uh, well there was a point where i thought no kulas kulas has given up and you, i think i remember you said to me no, you you wait for this and he was just sort of pacing himself and and and, and he just went for it didn't he and Went for the juggler on those last sort of three three laps. I can't believe how how he did that. It was unreal, you know. Fair play. I'm, I'm quite surprised though, because Conrad again was really honest and said, "I actually felt a bit of pressure, like because mm -hmm. we picked it up." And he and he genuinely felt a bit of pressure about being the first guy to win on a 250. So yeah, I think Kulas though was like on super form the whole weekend. Yeah. Like, just ridiculous. I spoke to him after the first Moto win, and, I, and it still sticks in my head. I was like, are you happy? Like, how was that? Do you, how do you feel? Uh, the bike's not so good. Uh, we need to make some changes. I'm thinking, are you Are you what planet? Are you what? You just destroyed everyone. What? <laughs> and then he, like, just carried on destroying people. And he was destroyed. Yeah. Or are you destroyed? <laughs> well, that's that. that that's, what that's what it's like. You know, they're, they're hardened on, on, up there. The north. Oh, he, he's just the north east. Me, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, who, yeah, so going back to, the, obviously, he took maximum score. Sean Simpson, uh, discuss, Callum. Where are we at with Sean? Uh, I think he was pleased to be there, getting some race time in from what I, I think can tell. So I spoke to Sean. Uh, I, I speak to Sean quite a bit. Um, just you know time time right in my own time um he, he, he's just trying to find a bit of comfort i think um he's really struggling with his setup uh this year with the bike um he's not really sure why uh he's got, i know his brother doesn't work for wp anymore his brother is at ktm so it's not like he has the advantage sort of on the suspension side of things so uh i mean at the weekend he threw he threw in actually a standard set of air forks believe it or not tom um and he and he started going faster. I don't, I don't know whether in the sand he just wanted the bike to, you know how it, it, like the air forks sit quite high, don't they? I don't, I don't know. He just found a bit more comfort with the with the standard forks. Well, because I did the I did the exact same thing this weekend because we did we've been in the same boat a little bit. We we we're okay, but it's, it could be better with more suspension. And so we've just gone right back to the beginning again. Just threw in, we threw in some air forks or for the sat anyway. For what why not? Just give it. Give anything a go. I don't think uh, they're too bad now, are they? Even no, not too bad. I, I just, but I did just throw them in. Really, we, we had them done, but they needed a bit more. I needed a bit more time on them, so I did about I think one race on them. I said, I'll right, get, I'll swap it over. I'll just stick to what I know a little bit for now. But uh, yeah, it was, it, was, it was quite funny that I heard, I heard he went back to the the air stuff. Yeah, I, I don't know whether there's even a major change between the older cone valve and this new exact stuff. I don't know, but it seems. Like quite a lot of people haven't quite figured it out yet. Um, I mean, obviously Conrad has. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think what a lot of people are saying it's it's complicated. That's the thing. It's not. That's what we're struggling with. There's there's so much to it, where 
I look, we just want something quite simple where we can just a few clicks and then we're done. But there's this dial, there's this dial, and you got yeah, so, and then you've got diff different cone sizes and all sorts of stuff. Yeah, so it's it's very complicated. So I think that's why a lot of people are struggling to find a setup. And there's so many settings. That's the thing. If you're yeah. actually where before you've had the you've had a range of what you can and you can work on a little few stuff, but this time the the range is so vast. It's like no one really knows what they want. So the range on the exact stuff is more than what it used to be on the older cone valve. Yeah, I would believe so. Yeah, I don't know, but I, it's yeah. we we've really struggled this year just because there's so much there's so much to it. I, mean, I think it's like anything that's new though, isn't it? Like it normally takes a year or two for people to actually find, you know, like a good base. Um, yeah. Because uh, sometimes you can find a base. And then actually lead yourself down the wrong path. And I imagine Sean's probably the sort of guy that could do that because he does do a lot of testing himself. Does you know he's, he's quite hands on with the bike, so it could be quite probably quite easy to go down a rabbit hole that's um, that completely the wrong way. You know, I, I'm just I've gone very quiet because I'm actually learning something. Um, you know, because I just used to be uh, put my faith into other people that I was good uh, uh, good at giving feedback, as in uh, uh, testing bikes. Yeah. But the actual technicality of what to do to make it better, hand that over to somebody else. That yeah. was my gig. Um, so yeah, I was I was uh, very interesting stuff. We should maybe do a feature at some point, Callum. Maybe on we can get Sean in. Maybe we should get yeah. Sean in and see what he's got. To say well, about. yes. If you're if you're still with us after an hour uh, of, of chat, um, as I said, this is just our first one. We're gonna. We're going to have more time to think about this show. Come up with some little quizzes. Um, get some different guests on. Try and make it a bit more entertaining. This is just our first one, so thanks for viewing. Uh, we'll be back after the next round. Todd Kelly, let's just let's just wrap up our, our review, our rewind with him. Um, he was always going to be all right, but obviously motocross and beach racing are two different things. I think he even surprised himself to get it on the box. He was, but like he was good. four motos is good for Todd, isn't it? Like if he had his way, there would have been four days of racing with four hour <laughs> races each day. <laughs> so um, he's an animal, isn't he? He always has yeah. been. He always has been. It's, I listened to the podcast he done uh, last week, this yeah. morning. Actually, he finished up, and the the things he was describing about his training and everything just sounded just grim, sorry, just not what advertising yeah. whatsoever. So I think at the weekend was just <laughs> a, a, basically a day, just a day at the beach for him. Really, it was. I think it was light work for him. But um, I can remember. Sorry, carry on. Just I'm going to grab something. I'm going to try and do a visual. I'm, I'm, I'm glad that he sort of found um, a niche, a niche because he was great. Obviously, coming through schoolboys and stuff, and he had like he had quite a bit of bad luck, didn't he? Really, the start of his pro career. Um, Let's just, I'm going to show nice you something. Found something that he's he's he, he's got his teeth into, and he's and he's actually doing great, isn't he? In that. When, yeah, when I first really good, yeah. when I first saw Todd Kelly, it was at Henstridge down in Somerset on a little RM85. I think that's the first time I saw him. So I want to. I want you to try and visualise this. It was. It was. It was hammering it down. It was grim. A lot of the other decent riders. He was only on a small wheel, eighty five. Some pros there didn't want to go out. Whatever. He was out there levering it around, just like no goggles on, wouldn't come in. But his body shape, and I know Todd will have a giggle at this, and his dad Nibs will, Mum Carol. So if you imagine. This is one of my old crash helmets from back of the day. If you just put some little legs coming out the bottom of that crash helmet, <laughs> like that was Todd's body shape. That's me now. He was just like this little wrecking, he was like this little he was like a wrecking ball. And he still is. And it was awesome to have him um at the races, basically, have him back. Hopefully he'll do more because um he is a gritty rider, good to watch. You know what? He blows me away how how um, good he is actually in the sand and stuff. Uh, for saying that he's a smaller rider, you know, he's really yeah. quite a small guy, and um, it's not normally the case, is it? Normally, you get like the, the enduro guys, beach racing guys. They've always got a bit of length to them, haven't they? But he, he's yeah. just he, he's, he's solid. Running, but he's he is mint. literally like he's just solid. He's got like, that Carmichael. He's got that Carmichael thing about him, you know, like when Carmichael was like just just yeah, definitely, definitely like a. I don't know, like a dead cow hanging up in a butcher's freezer. <laughs> it's just <laughs> like that. Um, so it was great to have him there. So overall, obviously, a great first round, all said and done. 
Um, we're not done though, because I just want to bring this up. Um, we're going to get proper graphics made and everything for the next round, next next one we do of this show, um, which will be after Hawkstone. Uh, the Planet Moto first lap leader. Let's bring that up because we a new concept this year where obviously the first rider, not whole shot around the first corner, the first rider does exactly what it says on the tin, actually. The first rider over the finish line on the opening lap um, basically scores points, um, gets five points, and then that whoever's got the most points at the end of the year in all classes except the pros, Tom. So you're not eligible mm. for this. I know. We <laughs> thought we thought you guys get enough, you know, recognition and stuff. So unfortunately, you're not involved with this. They go over with that, put in their pockets, don't they? <laughs> hold on, though. I, I might have been misled information here because I've got the top three that Elliot Spencer um, fired over to me earlier. Now he's worked it all out. So um, currently leading the way in this competition, the Planet Moto first lap leader, Bobby Bruce, basically got twenty points. So Max, he, he, he was first across the line in his class in all races. So it's looking good for Bobby after round one. Cole McCulloch was in, got second. He grabbed, I think, t ten points or whatever, and then Kulas got third. So if it's not eligible to the pros, I don't know why. We'll look at that. Yeah. Anyway. Cool ass isn't leading anyway. Bobby is, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> so the Planet Moto, did you see, um, I'll tell you who did get five points, uh, Charlie Putnam. Did you see that, Tom? He, he went over the finish line. He knew he got the five points and he threw out a knack-knack. It's on I Planet did, Moto I did see it, Yeah, I didn't see it live, but I saw it on the uh, the video a few days later. And I, was, yeah. oh, I, didn't, I didn't even see it. I, I, was, yeah, I, know, I heard the broadcast, and the, um, well, I heard the broadcast, and that none of you caught, like, Caught up on it. No, no I didn't, didn't see it. And then Jeff just goes, "Did Charlie just do a knack knack?" <laughs> I don't know. Like, I, I was, I was even watching, but I think from the angle yeah. where we are, you just probably, could, I don't know, it's because it it's like head on it. Yeah, you just didn't see it like it, 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 it all the guys. It's just carnage, isn't it? And yeah, yeah. I, it, I couldn't believe it when I watched the video. I just thought that is the most it's so Charlie, though, isn't it? That is so Charlie Putnam. Um, yeah. <laughs> he brings a lot of value to, to the series in Comedy Val, uh, Charlie. Um, yeah, go, and, go on to Planet Moto Holidays Facebook page. You'll see it on there. Um, so all said and done. Look, I, I'm only speaking for myself here. I hope everybody else felt the same. But I really enjoyed being back at the races um, and the Mitchell MX Nationals powered by Milwaukee. Obviously, the year we've all had with COVID and everything like want it just cool to be back at the races, two days of action with the pros. The sun was shining, autumn was racing. Yeah. Uh, honestly, it was, it was so cool to be back. I, I absolutely I, loved it and I can't wait for Hawkstone. Apart from the fact I had to stifle a hangover the whole of the Sunday. Well um, that's, that's your own doing. Well, <laughs> I, I was just I was actually dying. So um, yeah, I was quite I've I've watched a few bits and bobs back and I I was quite proud of myself for getting through ever that, yeah. ever the professional first uh, our first live stream of the year we've got to get it right his words to me tom on <laughs> his words to me on saturday afternoon i'm going to get going quite early i want to get home make sure you know i get all prepared whatever what does he do ends up staying at the venue getting smashed with the revo <laughs> team management and not even going home <laughs> yeah, I, slept in the, I slept in the Revo lorry and it was like sleeping in a flipping farm. I was just snoring. Like, I, I'm really not good with noise. And everyone, like, there's a snoring from like the driver in the front. Sam's above me. Uh, like, and they're just like, it's like tandem snoring. And then I think I was listening to this sleep um, thing, like, on my phone to try and get to sleep. And that finished. And I knew it was an hour and 40 minutes long. And I thought, oh my God. Oh my god! And then it's not like <laughs> to sleep. Half seven, I get woke up with Sam in my face, just hoovering. Just <laughs> are you? What are you people? Like, are you, what the hell? Like, come on, stop making work, noise. Work hard, play hard. See, there come a time, Swanee, in your life where you just can't do it anymore. Trust me. Yeah, it, it's getting um, there. It's getting, it's getting there. there. Uh, well, listen, fellas, uh, thanks for coming on this first uh, Michelin MX Nationals uh, Rewind show. As we said, um, this is the first stab at it in very much a hurry. Uh, the next one will be, uh, like I said, we'll have some fancy graphics, more guests, 
and uh, and all that kind of stuff. Tom, really appreciate you coming on. Is that that train again? <laughs> I, I, I tried muting the, the thing, but I just Lucky couldn't get out. Uh, Tom, really appreciate you coming on at such short notice. I can't stress how much this is short notice, but we thought, yeah, let's just get it thrown out this week as it's all fresh in our memory. But um, mm. thanks for you, and We'll see you all at Hawkstone. Um, me and Swanny will be there to do another couple of laps for the uh, track review. Hill climb. Uh, hill, hill climb. climb. Uh, Tom, we'll, we'll see you there. Um, good I'm luck. Gonna, I'm going to break you going up that hill. Okay. <laughs> Snap the beat. That could be an edit in its own right. Yeah. 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 Old picket fencing on the side and snap you. The gloves are <laughs> off. <laughs> um, Tom, honestly, really appreciate you coming on. Good luck at the weekend, uh, mate. Thank that you. all goes well yeah. for you. Um, and we'll see you at round two. Uh, tell Dad to keep moving about for at least another hour before he sees his solid. <laughs> um, oh, God. After he's fed the dog. Swanee, thanks for your time. I'm glad you no managed problem. to um, also, you know, get your Chinese down before we went live. Yeah, I think I think next time um, I will move into the front office where there is uh, less train exposure. Yeah. You know, you, there'd be less train noise on a train. Uh, I, I, <laughs> on a train. <laughs> oh, there's one coming. No, it's not. It's false along. <laughs> right, guys. Get out or get out of here. We'll be back with uh, the second show sometime after Hawkstone. We'll let you know. Uh, just one more reminder because I'm going to be I'm going to be sort of uh, relatively semi-professional. There's the dates scrolling across the bottom of all our rounds. As soon as we get the information on where we're going to be for round three, we'll let you know. Um, this is where you go, by the way, if you want to find all the information on the series. So crack on and do that. And that's us done, fellas. We're out of here, Tom. Um, thanks, for, thanks for schooling me today. I felt you know, <laughs> needed a little reminder how tough, how fast you lot are. Um, <laughs> Swanny, we'll get out riding soon, eh? Yeah. Well, you know what? Next time, invite me. It'd be great. And I'll turn up. I, I couldn't. It wasn't my gig today. It was a Moto don't, Loco, don't, don't, don't Moto Loco ride thing. Okay. All right. Oh, he's got the salt now. Look. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right let's not have a let's not have a lover's tiff on the show no, no, no. let's be professional and do that off off screen it's fine, it's fine. okay <laughs> all right let's remove that uh tom we'll see you later great to see you, great see you guys bye, bye. See you later, mate. Bye, bye there he goes there goes tom swanny i will he's gone as well so there we go um that's it folks uh that's me done as well hope you enjoyed this little over an hour or so of chat we will be doing it again as i said with a formatted show uh, we're just winging it. Don't mind admitting it that for the first one. So hopefully you enjoyed it. And uh, we'll polish this up and we'll do it after every round of the championship. So another five of these shows throughout the year. Um, that's it. I'll see you at Hawkstone along with Swanee. Um, get booked in. Entries now uh, up and running live if you haven't done that already. As far as I know, spectator tickets, it's still the, the same gig with the 4,000 people. Just keep a view, an eye on what's going on with the government and ticket sales and all that. But obviously, spectators are allowed and we'd love to see you at both days at hawkstone for the mitch and mx nationals powered by milwaukee thanks to all our sponsors uh, you know who you are you've seen it on the live stream if you haven't seen the live stream coverage from the weekend it's on uh basically our facebook page mitch and mx nationals facebook page and also on dirt hub page and it's also on a youtube channel called alpha live so if you want to go back and watch all the weekend's action you'll find it there right that's me done We'll see you soon. Take care, everybody. Stay safe.